Hi guys, welcome to the channel and this one's just going to be a full length video on building another little diorama. Uh, we finished the uh, Cannonball Run Porsche about a week ago. Um, and I, I've said at the end of that video we'll, we'll be doing something just to set this on. Uh, I've got a few ideas in mind um, but we've only got a few days to do it in. Um, we're on the last week of September, I've got, I'm halfway through that week. So what I'll be doing is I'll like the last diorama video. I'll just be uh, showing a few clips on how we got to each stage with a little bit of an explanation. I know in the last video I got a few comments saying you know they'd like to see the full process, but what people have to understand is you know them kind of videos where you you filming uh, slicing stuff and what have you and gluing stuff together they take months to put together i've literally got a few days so it's going to be that basic but a simple explanation um seeing the seeing the dioramas come together in its raw state should be more than enough for anybody to just go out buy a few really cheap craft uh, materials and, and, and do something themselves it's not a how-to video but like i say it's it's really basic stuff so I've got a few ideas in mind. Um, got a few ideas in mind to, on the direction this one's going to take, um, but no solid plan whatsoever. I've, we've literally got the model, um, which is going to eventually be probably screwed to it. We've got a couple of bits of what well, the nine three five, which we which we cut off um, at the beginning of the project. So we've got them left over, which we'll probably utilise. I bought a couple of different size picture frames for a base. Um, this would probably be the ideal size picture frame. Uh, the A4 ones are just too small. Um, but I haven't opened this up yet, and I've got a feeling this is all one piece, because I wouldn't need this centrepiece here. So if this is all one piece with just some carving out of there, and painted a different colour, it's going to be no good really. So the only other size I could find was, you know, this one, which is 21 by 30 uh, centimetres, but it's a big old frame, is that. Um, model might get a little bit lost, but for what we're doing, it is going to be kind of more artwork kind of thing. So, and it might just give me a bit of space to add to it at a later date. I do have another project in mind for a Cannonball Run car. Um, I've been looking for a monogram sort of 80, 79, 80 Trans Am, which will do as a police car. And even if even though it wasn't a police car, which was doing the roadblock at the beginning of the movie, I think it would tie in quite well at a later date. So, uh, so we might... We might end up using the big one anyway. Um, next clip will show you. I've already managed to break the glass on this, but it doesn't really matter. We're not going to be using the glass. Um, and we've got a bit of leftover foam. I don't think any of this is going to be any good, simply for the fact that this stuff is, what I've got the majority of is, is too thick. And I cut most of the, the thinner stuff out. So, so like I say, um, hopefully by end of video, we'll have something something nice to look at something a bit different we're not going to go down the usual diorama route it's going to probably have a bit of a twist with this one um so it'll be worth sticking around to see see what we do but without further ado i'm just going to crack on like i say i've only got a few days to to get this done in um so yeah we'll see see what we've used for for the base um how we're setting up the projects and we'll just go from there so we will just see you in a second Right then, well I thought this would be about as good a time as any just to stop and take a clip, see where we got to. Uh, I'm going to want to start throwing paints on this soon, so I thought we'd best um, just stop for five minutes and show you what we've done and what we've used to get this far. Uh, first of all, we have used a bigger frame. Um, the other one, the slightly smaller one, you know, that was all one piece of wood and to be honest, I did consider for about five minutes trying to chisel out that middle bit but uh i just couldn't be bothered it, it would have taken me three hours and i've pretty much done this in about the same time so um so yeah like i say we've gone for the big frame we i decided to to work straight off the base on this thing uh the foam would would have just been too 
too big to be quite honest with you and because what we're going to be doing we're going to be doing wall art so to speak um this is going to be something we're going to be hanging on a wall so eventually that'll be screwed to the base but so it's going to be kind of upright i mean i don't think the way i've got my camera right now will fit all on screen but it's going to be sort of upright on the wall that way so that's going to be the orientation of it finally but um i didn't want it static we weren't going to get an accurate diorama for for how the scene was so i thought we'd just add a bit of fun into this one so we have had it so that the, the car's going to look like it's crashing through the frame eventually there's a whole lot more to to go on this slide but i'll i'll spin it round and you know, we have started doing a little bit on frame. It's a, it's not proper wood, this, uh, whereas that other frame was, so uh, that would have been slightly better, but it's just like a composite, just cheap frame. I think this was about three quid from from one of the local shops. Like, so uh, it took a bit of hacking, and then we just started roughing up the edges and what have you with, um, you know, with, to raise a knife and what have you and we're just starting to throw a little bit of wood in there just to make it look a, a little bit more wooden so to speak but and then we, we're we going to add some fence posts in um the fencing is going to probably support some of the some of the panels which uh we're going to do sort of coming off the vehicle we've started started cutting the front end apart so we've got the, the two wings loose i'll probably break these up a little bit more but until i start sort of laying things out a bit i i don't know where i want to cut them or if i'm keeping one hole but and how i'm going to suspend them so to speak so but yeah i mean i ain't done anything with the rear pan rear quarter panels but you know the front bumper i just started cutting apart with I really chewed it up using the um, sprue cutters on this one because eventually I want it to look a bit like fiberglass sort of composite which these were like so um, once we've painted it we can sort of paint the, the little strands sort of white so to speak but yeah I mean I don't know where I'm going to set them how I'm going to how I'm going to support them I think I'm going to be using parts of broken flying fence posts to support some of the panels and then we'll we'll just figure it out as we go along but because there is literally no plan at all you know i have the rough idea like i say it will be something that's going to be hanging eventually so but um like i say we're building directly off the base i didn't want to i didn't want to just build straight off the bases and used painting the um the wooden wooden rear i didn't want to just paint that so first of all i was looking for a bit of sandpaper for the for the blacktop um and i was uh, the only stuff that I've, the, the harshest stuff i've got close to me is uh 400 and i thought i had some like 40 grit somewhere in the where i keep all my decorating stuff uh, but I couldn't find that. But what I did find were these. Um, these are all floor tiles. I think I bought one pack about 15 years ago just to see how I did. Like I was in a different house and I was just seeing if I could do a quick job on the kitchen. Like, and I want I wasn't convinced at all. Like, I can't even remember what I did. But camera won't pick it up. But it's quite a nice, quite a nice texture on them. There's a couple of bonuses with these that the self adhesive. I mean, I have I have glued it to the base as well. Like, but um, yeah, I think once we start throwing a bit of paint on there, the, the texture in there is gonna it's gonna be a good enough uh, sort of tarmac, so to speak. And like I say, we don't want to be winning any awards. We just want to get this thing done and have something that looks decent. So. Uh, we're going to put a grass verge in. The grass verge has just been done with um, with sort of polyfillers type stuff. I mean, I, I think this again. I think this was about a quid um, for this full thing of polyfiller. I bought it for the for the last project. Um, the fencing we've made out of out of 
coffee stirrers coffee stirrers i bought for a, another project um the pan am van which i did well over a year ago now we use coffee stirrers to make the the headrest so to speak but we just started roughing that into place um I wasn't actually going to build a fence at all. Uh, I was just going to do it coming through the frame. That was my original idea. But I think with this just being composite, I, I do want to add a bit of wood in there. And I thought the coffee stirrers would break and snap a, snap up a little bit easier. Like, so, yeah, like I say, we're going to tie all this in a little bit better to, once we start throwing paint on it. But... Um, yeah, we we have left a a little bit out of the grass verge. We we got something to go in there just to finish it off because, like I say, it's not going to be a diorama diorama. It's going to be something a bit wall arty, so to speak. And I'll say art very loosely. But when it comes to the grass, we've got some stuff to try out for the for the grass verge. Um, it's like aerosol grass in the cam. Uh, it looked like the easiest kind of stuff for me to use, but I've never done anything like that before, so might as well just trial it. Like I say, this is very beginner stuff. Um, just teach myself as I'm going along. Uh, like I say, it's just going to be a just hopefully something nice to finish off that model. But yeah, like I say, I am going to have to start throwing paint on this. I did just mark out on the baseboard um, where the car's going to sort of roughly sit just uh when i'm taking the car off i'm not trying to guess guess where it's going when i'm building all the fence and what have you but yeah i think um i think that's coming on quite nicely so far um like i say it's tying some of the features i put into the model um like the, that's why i put the drivers in why i really wanted to get the drivers in there because this was always going to be the end game so and why I took a bit of care cutting these pa panels off, even though we're we're butchering them up a little bit now, like. But um, so yeah, I think uh, I think what we'll do is we're just going to crack on and do a little bit more. I don't know if I'm going to do too much more today. Uh, I might try and just throw some black aerosol over that base just so I can get a base color. But um, and I can I can separate. It's obviously I'm taking the base out. Um, I did leave a little bit of a, a gap round. I'm not even going to try fighting about taking, unpinning all them things with all these in. Um, but the fence is glued direct to the to the frame, and the base just comes out separate, so we can sort of paint that a little bit easier, so to speak. And and we'll do something with the black eventually. I think I'll. I don't. I think it's good base color, um, but it's a bit too crisp. For what we want so we might just give it a bit of a grey wash um nothing too exciting like like I say it's a good it's a good base colour but um we'll certainly be doing something with the frame uh either ways but yeah I'll just crack on do a bit more and I'll I'll film the clip whether it's today tomorrow and, and we'll just see how the video goes. Right see you in a second. Right well I thought we'd just stop and take a quick look at the base colours we're gonna be using from here on it's gonna be a lot of detail in tidying things up so and some of this is going to get covered up so starting off like we we did paint the uh grass area we just did the base in brown it i hate the way it looks at the moment just because it looks like a big mud pile but it needed to be done didn't have any brown uh i've got very select craft paints or very few craft paints so to speak so i just mixed up a uh, bit of yellow red and blue just to make a brown color that was close enough because i'm only using craft paints on this i don't really want to be getting involved in anything else just keep it cheap and cheerful so to speak um but yeah i mean that was just that poly filler which we used and i did forget to mention i scribed all underneath here just so it has something to, to key to but you know, we've just got it overflowing the, the side of the roadway. I, I did look at the pictures how the the road um how the road was in that in that very short clip and just took a few key details out of there. I'm not trying for ultra realism or something like I say, it's just gonna be something 
cheap and cheerful to plonk on the wall. Um, but yeah, we just started muddying it up a little bit before I put the painted the, the brown. I had to do the roadway just so we could get the stripes in or the road markings in because um, I knew I'd have to paint brown and over the white. So, so we based the whole the whole uh this whole uh platform in in black just Sarah sold it black and then we just use different greys um and all I've done for the uh, for this is I've just sponged it um everything we've we've got on the roadway is all sponged uh the stripes everything so uh, I didn't want to use paint brushes on it at all uh I had to use paintbrush on the on the brown just because of the, the deep textures in it and it would take me ages just to sponge that but I didn't really want any brush marks or anything so uh, yeah we started off by just putting a, a few different greys on for the roadway Um we will be putting a few tire marks on there tire repairs uh, it looks a bit looks a bit bland without some something like that but We'll we'll do that in a bit. I'll probably what I'll probably use for that is I'll probably use gloss mod podge with um a bit of Tamiya Tamiya black wash poured into the into the uh, mod podge just to give it a bit of colour and then we'll go around it and do a few tar repairs. But I mean there's there's nothing it's it's like say it's all really really simple stuff. Um you don't need to see me masking up lines. All we're doing is I mean, I did do a bit of measuring, just make sure all the lines are, are the same width and what have you. So, yeah, so we marked up all the, all, the, all the lines on this and just got them painted on, like I say, just the same as the, the greys. We just sponged all the, the yellow and the white. Um, I wasn't too keen about, or fussed about really super sharp lines. I didn't want it looking absolutely crisp um so i just use normal masking tape one thing it's cheaper than using a, a ton of tamiya tape for this stuff and then another thing i'd like to say i just didn't want it perfect perfect lines and i knew i'd get a little nice little bit of bleed for on um just using cheap cheap masking tape so but yeah we, we're pretty much ready for the next stage um with this, you know, we can start thinking about the grass. Um, we're going to be using some layering spray, so we'll we'll have some like scale grass, and um, we'll just sort of shake it on. But we've got a bit of this layering spray to 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 make it look a bit more static, like so it stands up. Like I say, I never tried. That. It might be a massive failure. It might look absolutely rubbish, but we don't know until we try. So. But we've just been doing a bit of work on the body panels now. We've got all the all the body panels uh, painted up, uh, all in the base colour anyway. So yeah, we and we've just been doing different bits of damage on it um, on each one, trying to make them look a bit more like snap fiberglass and rather than dented or anything like that. You know, we wanted it to them to look a bit a bit more realistic to sort of broken composites uh pretty much got all them in base color now um i'm not going to start they're, they're very sharp and um and sort of you know we, we need to weather them a, a little bit but we, we're we not going to be doing any weathering or any detail painting until we until we start knowing how we're going to mount them because we do want them airborne um so i'm thinking i'm going to be using a, a bit of a mixture of uh fuse wire to i'm going to be using the 30 amp fuse wire to suspend some of these parts and then we'll just have to disguise it whichever way but yeah we've got we've got plenty of this fuse wire and it's it's definitely it's certainly rigid enough is enough is the 30 amp to to hold hold some of this stuff into place and you know they don't weigh anything so i think we'll probably end up drilling a few holes where we want them to to go 
And uh, just really going from there, to be quite fair. But, yeah, I mean, we, we've got a little bits and pieces done, so... But really, before before we do that, I really start needing to... I think the next step is just to see where these are going to be situated. Done nothing else with the actual outer frame. Got quite a bit more work to do on that yet to sort of tie it into the actual base. But uh, like I did say on the on the last clip, we did we did leave an edge round here just so it slots up into the into the outer frame. Because I I did want a bit of a raised area because I don't want to see a, any kind of gap between the, the bottom of the frame and and what we're doing so all that's been been raised we did we did the same for this side as well so all that just slots up and into the actual pitch frame so it, we aren't seeing any nasty gaps anywhere or anything so but yeah, I mean, I think it's it's coming along. Um, I don't know if it's better than I thought it would be. If it's worse than I thought it would be, I didn't really have any expectations. Uh, I think we're just going to carry on cracking on. Um, and next clip is probably probably going to be the final clip, I would have thought. Uh, it'll take me another day or so to, to get to that point. But yeah, we'll just see how it goes and see how it ends up. All right, we'll see you in a second. Right then, well, I think this is as far as we're going to take this little project. Um, we've obviously got it up against the backboard there just because, you know, that's how it's been built. This is going to be something we eventually hang on the wall. Um, you know, we, like I said at the beginning of the video, um, had no expectations on this, on how it was going to turn out. It was just a bit of an idea of a, a different way we can sort of display models and what have you with just a little bit of imagination and what have you but you know it can barely fit into the picture um so we will be bringing it down having a bit of a closer look at it but um yeah i don't think there's anything now at this stage what i want to add to it i've got an idea how we can potentially add to it in the future um with another project but you know that'll be something for the future and it, it won't be on this same picture frame so but there might be something there uh, to continue this in a in a in a little while anyway so but um yeah i'd like to say we'll just we'll just drag it down i'll have to bring my camera down so it might just be a little bit clumsy while i'm doing this but um but yeah i mean i've i'm now it's all said and done, pretty happy with it to be quite honest with you. We'll have a look around it, but and it might, like I say, it might be a bit clumsy because it's such a big thing. This um, this picture frame, uh, so I think it's a three size this one. So, but in all fairness, when I said that I would have preferred the smaller one, this one's given me a lot more room to work with, and I think the other one may have been just on the slightly tighter side, but. Yeah, we've um, like I say the idea wasn't originally just to, you know, we couldn't fit in that full diorama, um, so it was just what could we do? So we just turned it into something a with a bit bit more fun in in mind, um, you know, don't have to be realistic at all, but you know, we got we got the sort of spirit of that of that scene in the movie where. It, loses all its panels i think uh, they use pyrotechnics to to blow off all them panels in the movie but you know i think um you know it was just a bit of trial and error on this thing and i think it's turned out pretty well to be quite fair with you we've still got things set in um you know we'll have a look at some stuff in more detail i did say that i was going to do something with a picture frame paint wise because it just didn't look right to me, but I think it was because once I hacked that big slot out of it, um, with it with it not being proper wood, um, you know, it, it just didn't look right to us. But once I started playing around, I've, I've just used more of these um, coffee stirrers, and made it look a little bit like uh, more like wood. I mean, we basically would. We've had it so it looks like it's folded down the sides when it's driven through and we've just broken up some pieces and stuck them to the existing frames uh, and i think i think we get away with that to be quite honest with you 
Um, and all I did with with paint wise was I just used a, a black marker pen and it really blended in well. So after I'd done that and after I'd, because I'd, I'd, there was at one point I could have just been this whole project to be quite honest with you is a bad idea and scrapped the rest of the clips I'd done and just called it a day. But the more we, we got on with things, the more it, you know, turned out quite well like and we got the all the suspended pieces. But yeah, with that broken frame, I thought the best thing to do is to bring the frame into the picture. Um, we just used more of those pieces and sort of stuck them down as debris and in sort of different sort of you know different areas as a bit of a a bit of a scatter of damage so to speak um but yeah we've just got it's, it's hard to really handle this thing and show it on camera so you know that's the worst thing about building on su such a big frame is you know having having to handle this thing and trying to show everything but yeah, another little detail we did. Um, we we had to have it hitting a fifty-five mile per hour speed limit sign, and you know everything on here which you see suspended. Um, we've just used picture, not picture wire, uh, fuse wire for for the majority of this. I think the only thing which isn't held up by fuse wire is this rear quarter panel on which we stuck to the fence post, like that. Yeah, with um, everything, it's still actually gluing because I put a bit of extra support around the bottom um, with some seam sealer, just some clear seam sealer. You, can't, you can tell it hasn't fully gone off because it's still white. But um, yeah, everything's just pinned through and super glued. So, um, and the main main car is just screwed screwed straight into the to the base of the model. But you know, like I say, it's, it, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Like, I mean, we didn't want to do too much of this thing. Um, we just used a, a bit of cotton wool to, for that front fender just because it was pretty high off the ground. Um, but I could I could sort of justify it because we can do it as clipping the curb and pulling up a bit of turf and what have you, but... You know, it's just a really nice finished model. I think it's just, like I said, that's the reason why I was so keen on keeping the fenders. And like I said, when I was actually building the model, we pretty much eliminated any 935 out of the car. But, you know, again, that, that was these fenders and everything was why I chose this particular model because when I started it, I, this is how I, I sort of envisaged it ending, so to speak. But, um and i didn't really i didn't really make too much effort about trying to hide the wires i mean it's 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 not real um but to be honest it, it's it looks good enough like you know it they do look suspended at certain angles especially when the when it's upright and what have you you don't see any of them wires so i wasn't really too fussed about trying to disguise it just like the bits on the roadway we just painted in same color as the roadway and um you know the grass turned out well for me for me first go um we use that layering stuff just so we can get different depths like on the front we we just you we just did one application then to, as it was getting towards the rear we started layering up so we can get a Bit of a thicker application on there you can't really see it on camera and to be quite honest ideally you should be using different shades of grass and stuff like that but in all fairness i only had one bag of grass um not that kind of grass uh yeah i only had one handy and the weather's been absolutely appalling here and i really didn't fancy going into town and getting anything extra so i wanted to use um I've had this static grass for for a while now, like, and I've been wanting to find a project for it just to give it a try, because I've seen good results on, and I think this static grass works really well. I think the reason I chose this stuff when I originally did did was one because it had a a good mixture of colour, um, 
And the other thing, it was the cheapest one there, three ninety nine. I think caught rest for like seven ninety nine or something. But you know, if you're looking for something similar, you know, this is by uh, Gauge Master. Um, that's your product number there. But just really, to I mean, you can buy all sign. I mean, it's basically flocking in a way. Like, um, you can buy all kinds of different, different things to like specialist things to. Put it on and you know by the time you're buying some of these kits where you know these flocking kits you, you're in it well over 120 quid like but you know i just use pva glue one of these little tea bag drainers um and then we just use the layering spray after that just to to build it up a bit but you know i was really pleased with that finish like um and i didn't like i said in the last clip i hated the brown and I didn't want to make it look like we've been ploughing her through the verge and uh, dragging. I just wanted the grass to look sort of flattened where it's been driven over. I didn't want it looking muddy at all, like just that bit of mud spill out over the over the roadway. Um, you know, and just to, to do a bit of debris scatter, um, I wanted a bit of the grass going on there. So I just used a bit of hairspray for that and just... Psh, couple of squirts up here and there like and and then just again just just use that um tea bag strainer just to shake a bit out but none of it's loose like you know it, it's there for good likes uh and that layering spray was really easy to use as well like but yeah to finish it off the reason obviously why we've kept that that slot at the top is because i did want something because it was always going to be like uh, something we're going to hang on the wall um, rather than an accurate diorama. I was just looking around, I was looking at like DVD covers and stuff like that, seeing if I could work something into the into the project. And I came across this little fridge magnet. It was like £1.25 plus postage. So it was under three quid for, to the door. Like, and I thought that was kind of perfect, that little fridge magnet. And, you know, that's... Uh, I was going to just have it black underneath, but I did give it a go with the grass underneath and that works really well. I'm really happy with that, like, and it just gives to, gives it, like, if people walk in house, like, they just, you know, they'll see it's obviously for a movie rather than me just being a bit bonkers and sticking a model car to the wall and what have you, but, yeah, I think, um, I think that turned out really well, to be quite honest with you, I'm, happy with the way the, the parts are suspended and what have you and it was never going to be accurate to the to the movie it was just to capture some of the spirit like i said for it and uh i think we got that you know that's i think you know and that's why we built it originally the model originally with the um bert and dom de louise in in the in the car like you know and yeah, really pleased with that because, like I said, at one point I could have just thrown this whole project in the bin. Um, but just a bit of perseverance, like, and it hasn't taken long at all. It's, you know, I've probably got eight hours in total, a few hours on, on a night and an odd hour here and there just to to get it finished and, you know, make us able to move on to the next project. But, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, like I say, I think what we'll do is we'll... We'll um we'll take a load of pictures. I I have a load of in progress pictures. Um, I had a load of in progress pictures, and what I'll do is I'll take some pictures of the actual model first, and then if anybody wants to stick around and see how some of these this was put together, because uh, the pictures might explain it more than I can. Like, so. but um. Yeah, I think we'll call this one done. This is, you know, one we can, one we can now hang up on the wall when I, where, like I say, where I, when I find a space for it, I've got a bit of moving around in the house to do anyway. So, you know, I think I'll save it until I'm, I finally got me, we workbench moved to where I want it to be moved to and what have you. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think. I think the next video we haven't done a workbench update in a 
in a while like so uh, I think um, that's been long overdue I think the first time I mentioned I wanted to do a, a bench update was when that Porsche model was still in progress so it's, it's a few weeks overdue we are we are miles behind with a lot of stuff um, still got my USA CC um, video to to put out like to let you guys know this, what I've decided on to do for that thing um, and we've got other ones to catch up on we've got the street machine uh, group build to, to catch up on um, I think that's probably going to be the next one to start on to be quite honest with you just because I really don't want to be late to doing that one I was like six months late with the, with the other projects uh, you know I'd, I'd want to get that one done on time but yeah, really glad I enjoyed this group build. Um, you know, all the guys who put it on, you know, it was, I, I was a bit gutted I didn't get a chance to join in last time, but I didn't really have a, a Porsche I really, really wanted to do. And I was had so many other things going on at the time, but I thought I wouldn't miss it this year. And, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be in it for another year. But, but yeah, I mean, if you've, you've watched, stuck around and watched the video you know thanks ever so much like like I say i mean this is just a just a it's not an out obviously not being a how-to video it's just something to maybe give you an idea of you know ways you can display your models i mean in that orientation you could have a couple of stock cars next to each other and what have you or you know it's, it's just you only limit your imagination is it and i think uh i think this one works out pretty well to be quite fair and really happy with it and um, yeah more happy with it than I thought I would be to be quite honest with you and I think like I say it just ties up this project and but yeah um I'll I'll leave you to it now um again thanks for watching thanks for all the subscribers if you've not yet subscribed please do drop us a sub um I don't usually ask for people to subscribe in these videos but you know it'd be really cool if you would like and we'll build be building plenty more projects like this in the future like I say I've got another idea how I can continue this little little project but in a in a completely different project um yeah we've got the USA CC coming up and and, and loads more I'm sure in the future so um but yeah again thanks to everybody who's who's already with us who's come on board lately as well you know so it's greatly appreciated so so yeah whatever you're doing for the weekend i uh, hope you have a great one stick around for the photos at the end and we will just see you in the next video okay see you bye